So this week I'm going to fish my first festival of the year. Now this festival is a three day, three day event at First and Lakes in Milton Keynes. Beautiful venue, natural venue, loads of bream, a few roach to go at, odd cart maybe if you're lucky. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to see the behind the scenes of what goes into like a festival and uh, you know how I go about preparing for one. I'm going to go this afternoon actually, this is, it's Monday morning today, so I'm going to go this afternoon. My friend Dan Webb's there, Pete Archer's there, I think Steve Howard's going to come along as well, so uh, they'll, they'll be fishing. So I'll go get a few pictures of Dan for his column for Match Fishing Magazine. Um, but I'm also going to take my rod, I've put some new braid on my reels, um, which means that, so I'll go out, chuck a method feeder out down there, and just see how my braid is and make sure it's all stretched out, because uh, you know you don't want any mishaps coming the big day. Now we've ever, ever been, been feeder based, or my approach certainly. There's, you know, there's not that much of prep I need to do actually because I'm going to keep it dead simple. Last year I learned a hell of a lot. Um, I had a really good day on day two last year where I felt like I fished a really good match and I fished um, 60 meters with an open end feeder, catching like an odd skimmer, an odd bream, and then I fished really, really long range, 90 meters plus, up to 110 meters, would you believe, with a massive feeder, chucking it as far as I could with a 14 foot rod. And uh, I was picking. I won the section with 15 pound, and uh, it was one of those days where I really like a penny drop sort of thing. So I'm keeping the fishing very, very straightforward. It's on weight over three days, so I, I feel like if I can catch 40 pound over the three days, I'll be close. I'll be somewhere near winning it because, barring a, a miracle, you know the weather's still a bit poor. Um, the fishing could still be a bit tough, but. Um, it should be good, but it should be good. So I just feel like my approach over three days, if I get on a few pegs, I'm going to make the most of it. So, uh, so yeah, let's. Have that. I'm going to jump in the car now, head off down to Milton Keynes, have a look at Dan, have a look at Pete and and Steve, and see what um, see what we can see at first. And but yeah, let's let's head on there now. Well, here we are, First and Lake, and I'm having a very very serious practice. I've just come on the. Monday before the festival and put some new braid on some new reels and I thought I'd just come and stretch it out a bit. So what I've done, I've literally got my rod, a bucket of bait, I'm having a chuck, I've had a couple of bream, Dan Webb's with me, Pete Archer there in the background's got one on look. So let's go see, let's go see Pete. Star in the making. Do you reckon sir? Green. Here's the match organiser extraordinaire look. Coming along. Coffee top coffee supplier. Steve Howard's turned up for a practice as well. They're all here. <laughs> nice fish. Lovely. Did you catch him on, Dan? I've caught him on a little methopeda. Yeah. A boily. Very nice too. Nice fish. How many have you had? Thank you very much. That will be number eight. Brilliant. Looking good for the weekend. So I'm just uh, getting prepared for the three day festival at first. And I just thought it'd make interesting viewing to run through the baits that I'm going to take to the festival because. Um, Last year I completely over-egged it, I ordered three kilos of worms, loads of casters, loads of maggots, just loads of stuff I didn't need, so uh, I'm just going to run you through what I'm taking this year. First up, we've got my ground bait mix, um, then it's a three day festival, so these four bags will easily, easily do the three days. Um, so, just a 50-50 mix of them, the brown and the green swim stim, 
my, you know, it's just a, a favourite mix of mine that I've caught loads of bream with. I'm just going to add a bit of yellow dye to it. When when you're looking at ground baits of this sort of green colour, a little bit of yellow dye just makes them glow a bit. And as the water's so coloured at first, and I just think it'll be a a nice little edge. Um, loose feed wise, I've got some maggots, nice and fresh from Chilton this morning. Sadly, they're not going to remain that way because I'm going to freeze them. Um, I've got two pints, but I'll just I'll just split them into thirds. Um, probably have loads left over, but I'm going to feed them on my cage feeder line. They'll also be a nice hook bait. Again, fluoro pinkies. Caught so many fish on them this winter, skimmers and stuff, that I just can't go without a few fluoro pinkies. Might just get me out of jail on a hard day. I've got a kilo of worms that I've had them all winter. Um, I don't know if it'll be a worm day. There's one section where it's going to be hard on the hotel bank where worms through a little cage, maybe for a few roach, might just get me out, get me some 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 extra fish. Like so, can't not go without them. I've got. Three individual bags of pellets, just two mils. They're the F1 sweet, dynamite F1 sweet pellets. Um, a pint of each for each day. Just going to soak them up as normal. They'll be uh, again for feed for the cage feeder, but also for the method. And then, last but by no means least, is some six mil wafters. Yellows were really good last year, and to be honest, that's probably all I'm going to use. Um, just nice, a nice yellow wafter. But yeah, that's it. Just a really, really simple bait menu. Oh, one thing I have forgot um, from my bait list is going to be some sweet corn, which I'll pick up in the morning from the shop. I'm going to take a tin of Jolly Green every day. Um, they seem to like a bit of corn at first, and so it'd be nice to have that in the armoury. But yeah, do not get a lot simpler than that, does it, for a festival? Nice cheap bait, Bill, and uh, hopefully we'll catch loads of fish as well. Well, good morning. Here we are. Uh -oh. Very calm. First and late for day one of the festival. I'm just about to first job mix some ground bait. Whoa, nearly. Um, like to do this in plenty of time. So rather than that before, I just do it in the morning. It's like half seven now, so plenty of time. See that? Nice yellow tinge to it. Lovely. Here it is. Look, the fully laden barrow. Far too much kit to chuck a method feeder out. A bit damp before. Had some rain. Our kit's down there. I've got to get down this hill somehow without falling on my ass. Well, I made it down here without falling over, which is a minor miracle. Got down here, look. So wet. But, um, looks alright, initial inspections. Totally different winds last year, it's blowing in. Blowing into us, so. You know, every chance that there might be an odd fish here. I don't think they'll need much in this section, but we'll have a little go and a lot more water to go out this year. So let's have a look and see what we can do. Right, I've just talked you through what I've set up. I've got a squadron of black vipers, browning black vipers, my favourite long range sort of rod. Um, got a 14 footer there for chucking long range method and I've got two 13s um, this one with a cage feeder on and that one with a method just to chuck over the same line um, found the other day that a method was as good as a cage over the top of some bait so um, got both options there um, using 50 gram feeders today um, because of that headwind I probably need them so. 10 pound shockers, technium shock leaders, O10 braid and various makes depending on what I had at the time and then uh, as you can see very nice pegging goes all the way around to over there where the bird feeder is all the way around here and up there to the bridge so I'm right near the end I don't know if that's a good thing or not but get some bait sorted and uh, get fishing Right, it's just before the all in, and I'll just show you my mix. Just got 250 ml of maggots, a few pellets, a few pinkies, and a sprinkle in a corner, just enough ground just to hold that together. I'm going to feed it with him. It's these seven or eight feeder fulls, nothing too much. It's a nice scattering of bait. Um, and then I'm going to chuck out with a method. You can see there, nice method mix. 30% 
pellets, so that's ground bait. Just gonna chuck out the method. Size 14 hook. And a yellow wafter. So, a couple of minutes before the start now. It looks really nice now the wind's got up. It's blown into this bank. So, with a bit of luck, we'll catch some fish. Right, we're a minute before they all in. Just got some feeder there loaded up, ready to go. Probably take seven or eight of them. Hopefully, we don't crack off. Because that would be embarrassing for everyone involved. Boom! Now the waiting begins. Well, we're an hour in, and we've not had a sign yet. The guy to my left had a little skimmer, and he like six out of yards. Nothing else has been caught anywhere, so I just I decided just to get a bit further away from everyone. I've reclips up at 80 metres on my method. Nicely, a comfortable 20 metres past everyone else now. Um, and I feel like I can just be dead patient on this. I free cast an hour on this. That I might be rewarded in the end. Get one or two fish from this section, I think we'll be, we'll be doing alright. So. You avoided the blank. Beautiful. Well, just over two hours in now. Uh, I think I'm on my sixth cast out long. And I've had that one little skimmer. And that's it. Um, go to my left side of the skimmer and a little roach. And Phil Bardell's probably got four little fish. Other than that, it's not happening. No one's had any proper skimmers. Um, it's really, really hard to be fair. But I've not tried my shorter line yet. Don't see the point just yet, might as well leave it to settle as long as I can. I think it'd be late on if I do catch on that side. So really got the water to myself now everyone else is fishing short and even when they are fishing long I'm a good 20 minutes past everyone so I do feel like I'm giving myself the best chance to catch a free. Hello. Well this is tough mate. <laughs> what you got? A two roach. Have you? <laughs> Dire, mate. What a legend. Oh, yeah. Everyone's struggling out here mate. Bud's catching on the pole on the point. Is he? Uh, 
the deeper water out there, you've got about seven foot of water on there, but yeah. it's only about four and a half foot on the pole line here. What's it? Two, two, uh, two bites, two rugs. How many has he had? He's had a few on, he's had a few on the pole now. Has he? Yeah, he's had a few, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's sort of on his own there, no one's fishing the pole around, he's just called out water to himself as well. Has, he, has anyone had a bream? don't think so. Well, I'm not that I've seen. Um, no, I think it's rain water coming through last night. It might, it might have been a nail in the coffin, I think. <laughs> No, oh, you're doing all right. Where, where are you down in A? A4, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well... Only a little of mate, only six ounce of but... There's a lot of blanks about, mate. Yeah, there's a lot of blanks. Couldn't believe it when he went round. <laughs> could, could, could be drawing for the other sections later on. Mor <laughs> is Morris Williams winning the match then with a pounder? Um, no, Bud will be winning the match at the moment. Is he? Yeah, he's buzzed. Bud's certainly got, I would have said, probably seven or eight pound now. Has he? Yeah, on the pole, yeah. Good, it's quite yeah. deep water, that, that point. It is quite deep out there, that's why the, uh, you know, it tends to be all right in the winter over there, but so he's, he's probably got three foot on my pole peg. Yeah. Yeah, easy, but no, well, heads down, mate. All right, mate, see you in a bit. I'll speak to you later, Sam. All right, bye, bye. There we go. Come on. Woohoo. Happy day. Right. We're halfway through. Um, I've had a three pounder. That small skimmer, so I've got three pound six, three pound eight, something like that. There's a chap up here who's had a skimmer of two pound, two small skimmers on the pole, would you believe? Um, but other than that, what I've got will be right up there in the section, first or second, so it's going alright. Got another! The lad next to me had four little skimmers like that. I've not tried on the cage, I've not tried the cage line yet. But it's getting to the point where I probably should go and have a little look at it in a minute. Um, just reduce it to 15 minute cast now. Um, the two bites have both come at 8 minutes, so I don't want to get the cut dry into a trap of leaving it in for too long, so I'm just going to. Up frequency slightly from 20 minutes to 15 minutes. And I hope that it pays off. Just 15 minutes of the match left, and uh, just had another one, two pound. Just spoke to Michael Buckwell, he's probably got 12 pound of roach, but he's not had a bite for the last two hours.
that's day one in the books and uh, fortunately I've had three kilo 600 to win my section so uh, 15, pig, 15 peg section so win 130 quid for that which is nice nice start I think I'm third overall as well today which uh, shows you how hard it's been uh, Michael Buckhold has won the match with six kilo all ropes on the pole um, and James Place has been second next to him with four and a half kilo bream on the tip so all to play for the only thing is tomorrow I'm going on B section which has been ever so tough today um, so if I can get out of that with a couple of kilo it would be uh, amazing to be honest with you um, but yeah fished hard but rode my luck a bit I've had two right at the end just to get me out of jail after them two fish that I pricked which I still don't understand what happened but real funny bites and then then off but anyway let's not dwell on that um, so yeah good start we're still in it which is the main thing after day one on a festival like this but as it's weight any literally anything could happen and uh, fortunately we're going to c-section on the last day which has potential to throw up a big weight so let's just hope it's my day good morning uh, it's day two just driving down to day two just set off of the first and festival and I've had a bit of a tactical think about today because I'm going to the rock hard B section where I just a kilo 800 won the section yesterday so it's gonna be it's gonna be rock hard hopefully be a little bit better today because some bait's gone in but I don't expect a lot if I'm honest but if I can get out of there catch a couple of skimmers then I think I'll have done all right so I was chatting to Rob Button on the way home last night and uh, about what to do and I think this fishing long and then having a 60 meter line it's just it's in my own head it's giving me I'm always thinking what if there's fish on 60 meter line rather than just fishing down that one hole and waiting and I don't think it's I don't think the fishing's good enough to get the most from two lines because you're always constantly thinking what if there's some fish on that short line or what if there's fish on the long line so what I'm gonna do today I'm just gonna fish long 80 meters but today rather than just have the method I'll set a window feeder up as well which will get to the 80 meter mark no problem um, and then I can just fish one hole all day for six hours and if I if I get you know if I get a visit and a few skimmers turn up I'm on the right line then and I think that that with it being so hard will be my best bet there are some roach to catch but there's just not enough roach to do any damage so I just don't see the point in setting a pole up or fishing short feeder for them or something because there's literally 100 to 500 grams worth of roach to catch so I just I just don't I need I need a weight again I need a kilo I need two kilo really so um, you know we want to win this festival don't we so well good morning we're here peg B3 as you can see wind's lovely blowing into me again section goes all the way around down to where that willow tree is all on this bank next to Dave again and going on last year's results this was a good area and there's some definitely some bream here last year but they didn't show it yesterday but if I could have picked a breamy peg for what I want to do then fantastic oh just seen a swallow first swallow of the year I've just seen out there that's got to be a good sign isn't it first swallow of the year well, just before the all in on day two, and it's beautiful, absolutely glorious, sunny weather. Um, as I said, I'm going to fish that 30, no, that 80 meter line, well, 81 meters. Um, set three rods up, two with a window feeder, and one with a method, just different length rods, just to try and make it easy. 240, uh, just in case that wind gets up. But yeah, nice, simple approach. Same bait as yesterday. I'm not going to put any bait in, I'm just going to fish a method for like two hours and then see what happens. Yeah, I feel happy and confident in what we're doing, so I'll have a go. Right, just about to get going and I'm going to go straight in with a method and out to the 80 metre mark. I'm going to have 15 minute cast to start with, try and put a bit of bait in and then. Maybe look to have a chuck with the window after sort of two hours when I've got some bait in, but 
Don't expect a lot till the last hour, if I'm honest. You never know, it's flat calm, red hot. Say red hot, nice. So, fingers crossed it happens. Expect that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Hey? No. Hey, well, I didn't expect that. Got one second chuck. Two pounder. Very, very welcome indeed. I didn't expect that at all. Everyone's filled it in around me and I've just chucked out a method and it's gone round. So, good start. Well, we're two hours in. Not any more fish, but... Just tried the window over the top. We like pinkies on the up. Dave next to me has had five bites now. He's only landed one fish, but he's lost three. He's got another one on now. So, there's obviously some small fish out there. I'm going to chuck over the top, set it up a bit with some bait now, so it's worth a quick half hour doing this. Never know, I might get a pull. Well, we're two hours, 40 minutes in. I'm just starting to get a bit twitchy. Like, odd fish are getting caught on closer range tackle and small skimmers. And there's definitely some fish feeding, and a bit of a window of bites. People started catching fish. And the faith was just sort of waning a little bit, and round it's gone. Just have one, two and a bit pound. So, happy days. Get another one or two, then we'll be sitting, sitting sweet. Well, unbelievably, just had a, my third bream. Better fish this time, three pounder. And the decision to single line it is uh, paying off at the moment. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's going all right. Happy man at the moment. Not as it is. Ten to two. 
two hours 40 to go. Hopefully the best period is still to come. Well, it's ten past two, and uh, it's a little golden spell. I've got four bream now and a little skin. And, uh, conditions are so good; it's like bright and sunny and warm, but the wind's picked up a little bit more. And it just looks perfect. Still on the method. And things are going well now, it's still rock hard, but I feel like I'm gonna get I feel like I'm gonna get a couple more. So still got the best part of the match hopefully to go. So let's hope we can capitalise and Since that flurry of action, it's gone a bit quiet. We've got just over an hour left. And we've got four bream and we've just had a second skimmer. So six fish, six bites. Interestingly, I just thought I'd try an old trick and put a feeder load in, chucked my feeder in, let it hit the bottom, emptied it reel back in and just put one straight back on the same spot and it went straight round and only a little fish but every fish today is vital so I've just double chucked again and tried that again so need every trick in the book today but if I can get another one then I'll be happy like I say I've got an hour left so fingers crossed we can get her. Well, the last hour flurry hasn't really happened. I've got five bream and two skimmers now. Um, what have we got left? 18 minutes to get one. It's not looking good. It's gone a bit flat calm out there and a bit bright. It's not looking the best conditions for another pull, but it's all set up. I've just been double trucking for the last hour, so there's plenty of bait there. Hopefully, she'll go around and we'll get, have, a, have another kilo to them there. Six kilo, seven hundred. Probably, I think it's got might win the match today. That so, well chuffed with that. And uh, roll on tomorrow now. Bud's only Bud's had a kilo, so I'll jump ahead of him. I've got over ten kilo now over the two days. So. Need a good day tomorrow now. Well, good morning. It's day three of the first of the festival. And I had a bit of good news yesterday, I actually won the match, which was a great, great day. Six kilo, 700 I weighed. Um, enough to win the match quite comfortably, I think three kilos was second. Um, which means I'm leading the festival now by over two kilos, which is good news. One potential spanner in my works though is C-section where I'm going today, which on paper in the first we, we thought it'd be the best section, but it's just not panned out that way. It's been it's been poor to be honest. And uh, yesterday we had ten blanks in that section. Um, pegs six to fifteen. 
all blanked. Um, which is where, funny enough, is where me and Dan Webb fished on Monday. So, there were loads of fish there then. But, confidence is sky high. I feel like I'm gonna catch a bream. Maybe not down there, but, I have taken a slight detour in my plan in that I brought a pole with me. Because Bud's going to where I, Bud, Michael Buckwell the second at the moment and he's going to where I was yesterday and other than that little area where I was um, there's not a lot of potential for a big weight but today is another day and fishing is a funny old game and uh, we had a lovely sunny day yesterday the water might have warmed up a degree or two um, well let's hope so anyway and Let's just hope that C section isn't as bad as what it was yesterday, and I can get a few pulls. But it looks like it's going to be another day, another nice day again. Clear sky, although it has focused a bit of rain. Um, but yeah, desperate for a draw, pegs one to five. Absolutely desperate. Well, the worst case scenario possible has happened. I've drawn C14. This is the way they all blanked yesterday. So, as you can see, really narrow up here. Just not many fish. Just put my platform in. And the water's freezing. Which obviously isn't helping. But, set my pole up, have a little go. And fish method three quarters of the way across, about where that goose is, and just take my chance and hope that there's some fish here. But, it's not looking good at the moment, unfortunately. Well, here we are, I'm all set up on C14 and... Uh, it's struggling for a bit of enthusiasm, I've got to be honest. Um, not a fish caught here yesterday. And there wasn't a lot on day one, so... Chances are we could blank today, but... Set a pole up. Um, I'm just going to put in three little balls with a few pinkies in and a bit of worm, just in case there's a few little roach here that I can maybe scratch together, but... Um, I just picked a line at 42 metres on the feeder, which is about three quarters of the way across. And I set a method and a cage up over the same line, same as yesterday. Um, yeah, hoping, I just need some massive luck. I need that tip to go around and need some huge, huge luck today, but it won't for a lack of trying anyway. So let's just hope that it comes together. Well, it's all to play for. I'm ready. Let's just hope we get a bit of luck along the way. I'm going to put hardly any bait in. If I put three in like that, odd bit of pinky in, odd worm, bit of worm. Just hope that there's some fish about. Hopefully I'll get one first chuck on the method and not all the worries will be gone. Better conditions than yesterday, it's a bit overcast. Did you see that? Boom! Yeah. And again.
Yeah. <laughs> exactly there. <laughs> It's got to be worth 10 minutes of my time, hasn't it? Sorry? Michael will definitely catch some fish today, so... B10. It's not great, but... Is he in front of the hotel, then? Yeah. No, it's normally boats there, aren't Yeah, that's the thing. He'll catch a few fish on the pole, I think. See that mate, yeah? That was an inspired bit of angling, wasn't it? Quickly got another rod out. I'm gonna put it in my net. Well, I'm shaking like a leaf. I saw, just as I was feeding my pole line, a carp jump out on the other bank. So I quickly scrambled, I can't even get milk bait on. I quickly scrambled up the bank, got another rod set up, and chucked some effort on it. 15 minutes into the cast, the rod bent double. And I just had a carp that must be 20 pound. Unbelievable. Fishing, eh? Hey. Unbelievable. That's proper luck for you that in it. Inspired angling I'm calling it. begin to describe how lucky I am today. Um, Bud needs now four and a half kilo. Catch me up because them two carp, even though they're probably 30 pound plus between the two of them, has got to be, they only count as three pounds but Bloody hell, if I could take, I could take three pounds. 
or six pound before the start. Unbelievable. Like I say, looking at it, I've probably got more chance of catching another carp. I've had another liner since. We've got more chance of catching another carp than they have roach and skimmers, so I think it could be a case of rolling the dice and sitting on this. Hope for one more pull. Unbelievable. They always did say it's better to be lucky than good. Well, I've certainly been lucky today. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Well, unbelievably, I've had a third car for Mirror, probably eight pound. Um, can't believe it, can't believe how lucky I've been. Um, there's obviously a few carp there, though. I've had a few liners. Just had a strange occurrence then, I just chucked out. Tip's gone round eight inches and just stayed there as if it got stuck in a rock, so I've reeled in and it felt a bit bumpy, so there must be some gravel over there or something. It's not really deep, I reckon it's only two or three foot deep, but. This car I've noticed up here, I don't know if you can see that, but there's some reeds and there's like a little platform. I think I've been watching the people feeding the ducks up there. So obviously, people must come all the way along that far bank throwing bread into the ducks, and uh, the car must patrol that far bank. So, I honestly believe I've got more chance catching another carp than they have even fishing for bream or roach, so it seems pointless. Um, doing anything else now. I've not put any bait, I've put the, fed the pole on, but I've not put any bait in anywhere else. As soon as I saw that carp jump out this morning, I scrambled to set the rod up and chucked it on it, got that one, and uh, not really had a chance to do anything else. I didn't think I'd get another one, but out the blue, it went round and got a nice mirror, so. Bit big that one. <laughs> Look at the size of this one. <laughs> now these, hey? But yeah. He's 23, 24 pound he is. Hey? 23, 24 pound? I've got about 60 odd pound now. <laughs> 12 pound. 12 pound. Well that's four. For 60 odd pound. <laughs> oh dear. Even I didn't think I could get this lucky. Well I've had four of those great big ones now. And I kind of got a feeling that that could be the end of it. Not that I'm complaining, but it just seems to have gone a bit lifeless now. Chat to my rights, having to go for one as well. Um, so I just got a feeling that it's the middle of the day now, they've probably just backed off and they've gone further up that way or back out into the lake. I don't know. Not had any lines or anything for a two casts now but no one's catching anything so I'm like a couple call, we've got three or four skimmers small skimmers but if anything could happen green turn up end of the day I've got 65 pound in the net but I've only actually got 12 pound in the net so if bubbles to catch 16 70 pound 16 or 17 pound which is very doable you can still beat me so could do with another one really. But we'll see, we'll see what goes on.
Well, we've got an hour and a half left and there's no more action to report. We've got four calf and to be honest, I think they're, they're long gone now. I think they've either backed off up there or they've backed off back out into the lake and the whole place has just switched off, so. But hopefully what I've got will do the damage for the day. Had a little McDonald's trip. Had a McDonald's brought to my peg, which was very nice. I'm just sitting it out now for another calf in the hope that I can get another pull, but I don't think we will now. I think it's past that. But we'll keep trying. Looks like we're going to get wet as well, looking at that. 20 minutes, I think we're ready to tell you. I might get 35. Said I might get another one at 4 o'clock. I might get another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shaking. <laughs> Another side shoe shuffler. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, there we go, five massive lumps that I never expected in a million years. They're way over 70 pounds between them. This is the biggest one, 20 pounds. Unbelievable. Let's get them back. Righty, oh, lads. Okay, that's, you can probably say it's been a bit of a brutal weekend, really, to be fair, but fair, <laughs> fair play to the lads that stuck it out. I mean, it's, it's fished awful, but there's always winners, whether you catch 20 pounds or 300 pounds. But um, yeah, fair play to the lads that have travelled as well. Uh, we've raised 900 quid for the hospice, plus there's a raffle to follow from this. We never had time to organise it. Yeah, well, but, um, well, we'll well, do it. Well, so, um, um, start on Friday. Uh, a section, Mr. Joe Caress. Well in Joe. Well done, well, Joe. Well done, sir. Might as start now, Joe. A section. Okay, B section first. We're getting a bit familiar, Joe Caress. Well done, mate. Well done, Joe. 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 Well done, which is why we've been in the van for four years trying to work it out. We're not very good at maths. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sit four in the day, uh, no arguing. It's fished a stormer all weekend, really. Joe Caress. Well 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 Perfect three points, mate. Good lad. Okay. Right, fourth place, James Place. Five, three hundred. Well done, James. Well done, James. Well done, James. Cheers, pal. Okay, third place is six four ten. Richie Tamala. Well done, Richie. Well done, pal. Steady weekend. Uh, in second place, with 9010, my mate, bud. I'm not sharing with him. And in, in first place, with 17100, again, a brilliant weekend to Joe Caress. Well done, Joe. Well done, Joe. Well, what an unbelievable three days. Uh, can't believe it, to be honest. Um, add two match wins and a third um, won my zone on all three days and won the festival won the uh, Super Bowl so just over 1500 quid so brilliant three days I've had three good days fishing today unbelievable still gobsmacked that that happened but just just amazing that if I hadn't seen that carp poke his head out as I was feeding my pole line, I wouldn't have even bothered setting that rod up and yet I've caught five carp on it. So, just unbelievable that, you know, you need that bit of luck when, when, when it's going for you, it goes for you. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed watching this and uh, very lucky how it's panned out that we've won the festival whilst doing this, but you know, sometimes you need a bit of luck and this weekend I definitely, definitely had that. But um, hopefully I've fished a bit all right as well. Oh, I've got a load of ants in my bag. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to click subscribe, um, it goes a long way, it helps me a lot, so thank you very much and thanks for watching. <laughs>